Knocked Out the Cabin has been on my radar for less than 30 days. I added it to my watch list without even seeing a trailer. The last movie I saw by M. Night Shyamalan was Split, which I surprisingly enjoyed, and based on this movie's description, my expectation was that Knocked Out the Cabin was going to be similar to The Happening. For better or for worse, I think I guessed right. The design behind Knocked at the Cabin is simple and natural. It's set, of course, at a remote cabin in Pennsylvania, and they decided to put the nature of the area to good use in the storytelling. There's plenty of shots of the woods, bugs, and plants in the area, all using natural light. Now, according to a tweet from the director, the film was shot using lenses from the 1990s to give it an old school thriller look. The editor used cutaway shots to hide some of the gore and violence, and there's a fair amount of practical effects chosen over CGI. Now, CGI is only really used to show the mega disasters that happen because of how large scale they are, but besides that, there's nothing really over the top about the design. The wardrobe is plain and familiar, Jonathan Groff literally wore a bathrobe the entire movie, and the four strangers were in blue jeans and collared shirts the whole time. So, pretty chill. Music really sets the tone of a movie and audio plays a huge role in the movie watching experience. So I think it's really important to get this part right. The original soundtrack for Knock at the Cabin has everything you would want from a traditional thriller. Scratchy strings, drawn out piano chords, loud drums. I don't watch a ton of movies in the thriller genre, but this soundtrack really put me in the zone to be anxious and that's exactly what it needed to be. The soundtrack is tense when the strangers are breaking in, it's dramatic when the apocalypse unfolds on TV, and the rising melodies really fit the climactic ending well. The best part of this movie, in my opinion, comes from the performances of pretty much everybody on screen. Dave Bautista plays the leader of the Four Horsemen, and his ability to be relatable and cold at the same time is chilling. It was hard at times to not see him as Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, but I liked seeing him take on a more dramatic character. Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge also deliver great performances as parents who are terrified by their situation, but over time come to terms with just how strange it is. You could see the emotional roller coaster of the story on their faces, which just felt so real and human. Shyamalan loves to invest in child actors for his movies, and he's done it again with Kristen, who plays Wynn. For doing her first movie at eight years old, she's great at giving the full range of emotions needed for this story. She's really the only character in the film that you know nothing bad is going to happen to, but we're pretty much along for the ride from her perspective from start to finish. Even the performances from the other three horsemen are so grounded that you feel conflicted about their characters. Do you want them to die? Do you want them to live? Ah. The major themes in this film deal with topics like safety and security. The feeling of being safe can be so quickly shattered, and it's a reality that almost every home invasion story succeeds in reminding us of. The screenplay is based on a book called The Cabin at the End of the World. That book received recognition for not only being a personal nightmare for many people, but also being reflective of modern times. The message is really more about asking hard questions of the audience rather than telling us what to think. Hard questions like, what would you do if you were in Andrew and Eric's position? Could you come to terms with the fate of the world being in your hands? I think those kinds of ideas and themes are meant to get people talking after the film, which is funny because that's exactly what my wife and I talked about driving home from the theater. She said it would be better if she was the sacrifice over me being the sacrifice and leaving her to raise a child alone. Can you tell we don't want kids right now? There's one minor bust and one major bust that I'm going to mention real quick. The cinematography included lots of extreme close-ups, and some parts were shot straight on as the actors looked into the camera. However, in a flashback scene, the girl who plays Wynn looked right into the camera multiple times when she clearly wasn't supposed to. I get it, she's a kid actor, it's a simple mistake, but you think they would have reshot it or maybe they just kept the take on purpose? The major bust for me is during one of the newscasts when the characters are seeing the apocalyptic disasters happening. They cut the footage of the tsunami scene on the beach and the news reporter says, this footage was just sent in to us, which isn't possible because obviously the person who shot the video would be dead on impact from the wave. It kind of just made me laugh and I looked over at Sammy who was sitting next to me and she just had the same look on her face like, seriously? Knocked at the Cabin is not my favorite movie from Shyamalan. With a runtime of one hour and 40 minutes, I think there's more to be desired from the story. It's definitely self-contained with the entire plot taking place in or around this one cabin, but I would have liked 
more explanation behind the powers at work to bring the four horsemen together. Also, in the opening credits, there were these hand-drawn figures that reminded me of the creatures in Signs, and that felt a little bit misleading. There seems to be more questions and answers that I think really could have been flushed out with some exposition, and I get it that it's a mysterious thriller, but just a little more clarification, either visually or through dialogue, really goes a long way. Watch the movie for yourself and form your own opinion about it. Here's more of my movie reviews on the channel, and I'll see y'all later.